Good day, everyone. Do you want to get fit but just don't know how? Today is your lucky day because we're going to design your own fitness program. To start designing your fitness program, you must first ask yourself if what do you want to achieve? To do that, you may arrange the following goals according to how important they are to you. Use number 1 to 11. 1. Being the most important and 11. Being the least. Students, remember that there are no right or wrong answers for this one because setting your goals depends on what your priorities are and what you want to achieve. I will give you two minutes to do this activity. You can rank your fitness goal using the Google Forms in your Google Classroom. Individual Performance Task Number 2 Time's up. So tell me, which did you score as one or the highest priority? And which one did you score as the least one? Now, let's move to the fitness pyramid. These are the different activities listed in the pyramid. And this indicates the number of times that a person should do these activities on the top part of the pyramid. Seating, using computer, cell phones, and TV time should be cut down. We should have more time doing strength or flexibility activities. At least twice a week, three to five times a week of cardio and other recreational activities. As much as possible, more activities that require us to be more active. I mean physically active. Now, let's find out the different classifications of exercises that you may want to include in your fitness program. Let's begin with the aerobic fitness. It makes you sweat, makes you breathe harder, and gets your heart beat faster. This one is to strengthen your heart and lungs and train your cardiovascular system to manage and deliver oxygen more quickly and efficiently throughout the body. Examples of aerobic includes walking at a brisk space, swimming, jogging, or even dancing. 
To be able to measure your heartbeats per minute, you must first know the specific points in the body where the heartbeat can be felt. The first one is apical side. You may feel your heartbeat by placing the heel of your hand over the left side of the chest. Second is the carotid pulse eye. This is taken from the carotid artery just beside the larynx. Using light pressure from the tip of your pointer and middle finger. Remember, never check both carotid arteries at the same time as this may cause you to feel lightheaded or dizzy or possibly faint. The third one is the radial pulse side. This is taken from a radial artery at the wrist in line with a thumb using the tip of your pointer and middle finger. Last is the temporal pulse side. It can be obtained from the left or right temple with light pressure from the tips of the pointer and middle finger. The next classification of exercise improves the ability of the muscles to exert force during an activity such as lifting weights. We call it muscular strength. Muscle strengthening exercises involve using your muscles to work against a resistance such as your body weight. Muscular endurance, on the other hand, tells you how many times you can lift or perform a certain amount of weight or activity. This resistance training helps increase both muscular strength and endurance. Resistance training such as weight lifting, push-ups, and crunches Work your muscle by using dumbbells for your own body weight. Bone strengthening exercises or any weight-bearing activity that produces a force on the bone is also important to overall health for children and adults. This force is usually produced by impact with the ground and result in bone growth in children and healthy maintenance of bone density in adults. Here are the examples of bone strengthening activities. It includes jumping, walking, jogging, and weightlifting exercises. Some exercises, such as walking or jogging, serve a dual purpose of strengthening our bones and serves as an aerobic system. Don't forget your flexibility exercises like stretching your muscles that may improve the range of motion of your joints. They can improve your flexibility and reduce your risk of injury during sports and other activities. There are different kinds of stretching. One is static stretching. It is the most often recommended for general fitness. It slowly eases into position and hold for 10 to 30 seconds before slowly releasing the stretch. Static stretching should be performed with warm muscles such as after warm-up, or at the end of a workout. Dynamic stretching is a stretching with movement. The body transitions gradually into position and this movement is repeated as you increase your reach and your range of motion. Research has found that dynamic stretching is less beneficial than static stretching for increasing range of motion. But, Unlike static stretching, 
It is ideal during the pre-workout phase because it gently warms muscles while also stretching them. Now, you know the different classifications and exercises that you may include when you start creating your fitness program. Let us check if you could classify the different exercises, whether they are for aerobic fitness, muscular strength, or bone strengthening exercises. I will show you some pictures and you can write your answers using Google Forms attached to your Google Classroom. Individual Performance Test Number 2.